everybody, my name is Inspirasper, and today I will be showing you a little tutorial on how I make my Launchpad light shows. Now, I am hoping to make this into a series, so if you guys want to see more, please let me know in the comments if you want me to continue this. But for now, this is part one. I'm going to show you guys how I actually set up my Launchpad in order to work with the MIDI light shows. Now, I use Ableton, and as you can see, we're already in Ableton. This is the default page when you go and start a new live set it gets you this page. I'm going to go ahead into the session view or layout view, whichever one it's called, I don't know, but I hit tab and I went into this page. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete one of these MIDI and one of these audio tracks. I'm only going to really need two, at least for the stuff that I do. You can do that by highlighting their names and then pressing delete. Now, if you're going to make a light show, you're going to need a song to your light show too. So I already have a song right here loaded up that I want to do a light show to. All I did was I went into my iTunes library, and dragged and dropped right onto the audio track right here. As you can see, it's in here. But when you play the song, you may notice that it's a bit warped. Um, and that's because sometimes when you drag and drop your song into Ableton, it's at a different BPM than what your audio file is. But also, Sometimes Ableton recognizes that your song is a different BPM and then changes the BPM to match that song. So in this case, when I dragged and dropped it right up here, you'll notice that Ableton's BPM changed to 141.99 when the default's 120. And that's because if you look down here in the audio file, when you click in different places, you'll notice that the segment BPM is 141.99. So basically when I dropped the song into the audio track, Ableton recognized that it was a different BPM than what the live set was set at, so it changed it. But sometimes it's at a different BPM, so I'm just going to go ahead and pretend as if this stayed at 120. All you need to do is you need to click right here and then type in your number. Um, you may, the number that you would want to do is, if you look down here, you look at the segment BPM, right? Uh, you would want to change your BPM to this number. Now, it's at 141.99, I'm just going to call it 142. And then, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the beginning of this part. I'm going to click on the beginning of the audio track, and you'll notice there's an orange bar. I'll right click, and I'll hit warp 142 BPM from here. Now you may be wondering why I even did that, since it looks like it warped it fine, which it did in this case, but sometimes when you drag and drop it, it has a different BPM, so you're going to need to go through these steps. You're going to need to look at what the BPM is, excuse me, BPM, and then you want to change this up here, and then in case if it's a little different, you're going to want to warp it. Long story short, this makes it so your audio track is the actual length and uh, BPM it needs to be, otherwise your audio will be warped. And so later when you go to maybe overlay your audio after you record your light show, it'll be off, which you don't want. So that's a long and complicated process to warp your song. But anyway, so it's set up now. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna name this our song, which is named Safari Fruits. And I did that by clicking on the audio track and then hitting Command R on the Mac. I don't know what it is for Windows. You can always just right click and hit rename. And then now what I'm going to do is I have my MIDI track right here. I'm going to drag and drop all the way past the song. That's just so we incorporate all of the song. That's This is just how I do it. If you guys find a different style you like, maybe you want to... Uh, you know, do different segments, like maybe you want to do just this part of the song, and then maybe you want to do just this part of the song, something like that. But what this is, is this will hold all of our MIDI notes and our effects, basically. And I'm going to go ahead and name this place. And so now, I'm going to go ahead and set this up with my Launchpad. Now this can work with the Launchpad S and the Mini, as well as the Mark II and the Pro. You can do these MIDI light effects for both of them. 
they just have different methods of setting them up. So if you're on the Launchpad S, what you're going to want to do is go over here, click where it says no output, and then click where it says Launchpad S. I don't have my Launchpad S plugged in at the moment, but if it's plugged in, it should show up, and you should click Launchpad S. And then that's all you have to do. That's it. If you have the S, or if you have the Mini, you know, click down here and then click here, Mini Output. And that's all you have to do. But, if you have the Mark II or the Pro, like I do right now, plugged in, you want to go to this new output and then click, for the Pro, you want to hit the Launchpad Pro Output, Launchpad Pro Live Port. I want to click that. And then the only difference is, below that, you're going to notice it says um, Channel 1. You want to change that to channel 6. That's just the default for the Mark II and the Pro. I'm not quite sure why, but for the S and the Mini, the default is 1. So you don't have to change anything. Alright, so now you're going to want to hit this recording arm on the MIDI track. And what that does is it enables you, when you press any buttons on your launch pad, you'll notice that they will light up in this piano roll, which is good. Basically, it lets you press a certain button and then you can see which button that is and that will let you later write that button in as a light effect. Um, so when we use these uh, MIDI light effects or these light shows we're gonna want to make sure we're in user mode so if you're on the S you want to hit user 1 and then if you're on the Mark II or Pro you want to hit the user button and that's what what mode will let us use our light shows in. And so now, we can go into our MIDI track by clicking on the MIDI roll we made. And you'll notice there's a piano roll down here. You can, um, there's a little gray bar separating the session view and the piano roll. And you'll notice your cursor changes. If you click and drag, that will let you expand or lower your view. So I'm going to go ahead and just fully expand it so we can see what we're working with it here. And what this is is a piano roll, where normally in Ableton, you would use it to make music. You would write in your individual notes, make your melodies, and that's how you make songs. But for this, we're doing something similar in that we're placing each individual note, but think of each note as a light, if that makes any sense. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we can now press buttons on our launch pad, and you'll notice that they light up and then you can click and drag or not sorry just click and you can make different uh, little these little squares represent a light and then when you press play you'll notice that they actually light up so I think that concludes part one of the, of the tutorial um, this was purely meant to set up your launch pad now, if you actually want me to help teach you guys how to make effects, how to you know, fluently transition between different um, methods of making effects, that, I mean, I can make a different different part for each of those if you want. So if you guys want to, uh, ooh, excuse me. If you want to see a continuation of this series, let me know in the comments, leave a like, please subscribe, and... That way I'll know to devote more time into this, and then I can actually help you guys make your light effects. Which is nice because, I don't know if you guys have heard, but recently Xihe has made a plugin where you can uh, slap in your MIDI effect rack and then put in little these little extension devices, and what they can do is you can put in different MIDI um, files right here and then when you press that button on your launch pad it will actually do that effect. So long story short this whole process that I'm trying to teach you guys how to do can be useful for actually covering songs too. So it's useful for just playing old light shows where you press play and then the lights go or it replaces your MIDI effect light shows. So. Hopefully you guys are interested. If you are, again, let me know. And then I think that will conclude this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys.
hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.